All right, what is up everyone? So the big thing right now, obviously, is we gotta well, recreate the front of my S13. In the last video you guys saw, we did the lower rad support. It's a good video if you haven't watched it, go watch mm -hmm. it. Now we have to move on to the next structural part, which is the strut tower, and we have to tie it back into the rail. So to do so, we have to plate it, right? Boom, right here, because it's just flimsy metal. So we're gonna be plating this, and then this will give us a foundation to build off of to tie it all back together. While Spoon handles this, uh, Reddy's here with his S14, and we're trying to help him get right on the dyno because what's really cool, if you guys remember the Zanke that I sold, Rudnick actually bought the drivetrain out of the Zanke, so it's now in your Zanke. She's a ripper. It's so cool. It's to gonna be this. a ripper. Yeah, no, it's only at seven PSI right now. I mean, I'm just letting Jimmy turn it up until he feels that it might blow up. <laughs> so, as you guys know, this is the NATSR, and uh, we stopped, I think, around 270 something on pump gas mm -hmm. because I was getting a little worried. It's pump gas, it's a NA bottom end, but uh, we're putting on ethanol, which unlocks a whole different world of opportunity with this 350 stuff. wheel, dude. Is that the number? The way I look at it is I have another engine like ready mm -hmm. to go. It's uh -huh. like, don't get me wrong, I don't want to blow it up, yeah, yeah. but like if it does blow up, at least we have another engine and. We, the, we saw what it could do. For the sake of science. For the sake of science. I have been so curious to see what this thing does on ethanol because, you know, it's the higher compression and uh, it's the higher compression SR. Um, it's an NA motor, so I want to see the limitations for it. We've heard a lot of good things from people in Australia and New Zealand, mm -hmm. but now Runnick is officially the guinea pig. Woo! And if you guys want to check me. out the results of it, um, Runnick should put the link in the description. You're probably gonna upload this video before me, so. Yeah, it'll, it'll already be up, so we'll be good. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, hopefully it's not blowing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully it's a good thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but for now, let's, uh, let's go push some buttons. Rudnick did to my poor jumper harness. Yo, Will, put that away, bro. Yeah, I quit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. Dude, this is a mess, man. What did you do to my jumper? Listen, dude, I know. This is my first time doing the boost controller. I messed it up. No, I, I, my I, first time doing flex fuel, I messed it up. I get it. You were close. I was you were close. I'm proud of you. I, I think I'm colorblind. The, I did um orange green instead of orange blue. No, I think I think the term is impatient. No, I... I, I shouldn't say I was taking my time on this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, well, l luckily he's at the right place for that harness right now. So, uh, yeah, no, we would have been screwed without you for sure. Because a couple things happened. I'm like, I'm glad Jimmy's here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just happy this thing's running again. It's super cool. Good. SR good. SR great. Thank you, Will. Yeah. Thank you. Love him. <laughs> well, right next, fixing some wires. Dude, that. Wow. It looks like you just laser cut this thing. I ain't go with a grinder. <laughs> yeah, holy shit, hold on. Dude, look at this thing. It looks like you laser cut it. Okay, mock it up, I gotta see it. You gotta put, I see that bend. All right, let's yep, see it. I just gotta put that bend in it. I am so impressed. Oh my God, that's absolutely beautiful. Let's, <laughs> that's not even fair how nice that looks, dude. I'm in good hands, I'm in real good hands. That's Take it. your time, have fun, be creative. There's no wrong way to do it. I mean, there's a lot of wrong ways to do it, but there's a lot of right ways to do it too. So, oh, there you go. So it's pretty much flat up until right here. So what I normally do. Yeah, yeah let's see it. I'll just mark yeah. the line coming down. Okay. But then we're gonna have to bend it again about midway through and then kind of taper in. Yeah. Right Remember, we want this side flat, so we want the bend to start after this. Leverage. There we go. There you go. That's good. I mean, you can heat it up. It just takes longer. You get burnt. Getting burnt sucks. <laughs> um, I think we both got burnt yesterday. Take a nice heavy hammer. Let's go see how close we are. See how close we are. Okay. So you play conservative. I see you on that one. Yeah. But you guys get the idea. The band is going in the right way. Just a couple more swings and boom. That's it. We're good. Finesse.
All right, so Ruddy's having some uh, injector issues, so I sent him to get them clean. But perfect timing because Spoon just finished welding, and this is sick. I'm all fucking tired. You're tired. I can see it. Check this thing out, right? Look, look how beautiful these things are. It's perfect. So now we have a really strong foundation to build off of, right? Because we have a thick piece of metal that is dispersing the load all through the tower. Versus if we would just welded a tube straight to the tower. It's only that thin piece of steel that it'd be attaching to, technically. No bueno. no bueno. So now we have to connect this to this. And here's where the creativity part comes in, right? This is the part everyone does differently, yeah. right? The shape of the bar, where the bar goes, all the stuff, right? All right. So let's, uh, let's go find a tube bender. <laughs> Today's beautiful. Been waiting for a day like this for a long time. But uh, that was the first wash of the S15. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but <laughs> it's like quite a bit more yellow now that it's not covered in dust and just dirt and grime. It's so good. Like this color is so good. But today is not about the S15. Today is about the E36 because that is our main goal right now. So I was trying to like do this in a systematic way where I'd want to do cage paint drift parts and do all that. But uh, the freight company has been a little slow at getting the cage here. And uh, so we decided to kind of mess the flow up and we're gonna do some drift parts to the chassis so this thing can be ready once the cage comes in and we do all that, right? We're just rolling on with the punches. That's it, taking them as we go. So this is our, let's call it the drift kit of the E36, right? We talked about how E36s or BMWs in general don't really take much to be a really good drift car. And uh, well, this is the combo that we're using to get this thing to the next level. So, so we have our Dworks package right here, which is basically a full surge tank for the E36, since we are using a stock tank and fuel slosh is an issue when drifting and this will help, well, alleviate that. So on top of that, we have our hydro, our lines, our shifter, all new components, make this thing feel dialed, all that stuff we need to mount so we can figure out where to mount the seat and where there's, whenever we figure out where to mount the seat, then we can make the door bars for the cage it's a process, right? On top of that, we have the new turbo, which we'll talk about later on. We have all our components to make our diff ready for drifting. And then the big piece for today is the SLR angle kit, right? This thing is, it's a unit. And uh, the reason why I wanna get this on first is because then we could figure out all our clearances, right? This will dramatically change our track width on the car. And well, since we have more angle, there's a lot more things getting in the way and hit. So then we could finally figure out what size wheels I could order. We could order wheels and it's a whole process. So today, we're doing the SLR. So we're gonna be keeping the factory knuckle, the coil lower, the brakes, all that. We're gonna only be changing the lower and the tie rods. Sounds simple, but there's some stuff we gotta do. There, there we go, see? Look at that. We got this to the knuckle. So let's look at the track with difference, right? So this attaches to the subframe. Look at that, it brings that, what is that, four inches on both sides. Oh man, this thing is gonna be like a bulldog. Yeah, it's three and a half inches on each side. Seven inches overall, more track width. <laughs> Uh, I hope I have enough overfender for this. But before we do the lower, we're gonna bolt the knuckle adapter on since we are using the OEM M3 knuckles. Right here, we could change our Ackerman if we wanted to, how it kind of responds. Right here is a suggested position for drifting, so we're gonna try it out and uh, go from there. So, go here. 
And then, we need this washer, since we have a 95 knuckle. And then this will be our new tie rod location, and then this will adapt to our lower control arm. So now we're gonna set up our lower. So we have our adjustable lollipops right here. That's what they call them. Kind of looks like a lollipop, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. So uh, these are the direct adjustment for our caster, right? As this extends, swings the arm in or out, which then adjusts our caster, which is very important in drifting. So we'll take this, lube on them. So then this, we have a lot of things to align right here. So this one goes into the subframe. The lollipop goes right to the back of the chassis. Let's look how far out this is. Oh my God. So luckily we have camber adjustment left in our top hat because uh, dude, this thing has like, what? Nine degrees of camber right now, 10? Crazy. So I just realized that we actually use factory inners, which is nice because if we bend these things, we can get them at a you know, local parts store. That's good, that's good. And we could use the dust boot, which is really nice. So we'll put this on. We're gonna go a few threads on this end since it is longer. So now when we adjust this, it pulls in this and this at the same time. Look at that. Perfect. All right, to go with our SLR kit, we got their sway bar. And this is the thickest sway bar I think I've ever seen in my life. Look at that thing. Ridiculous. It's girthy. Some guys don't like drifting with sway bars. Some guys like drifting with sway bars. It's up to you. Sometimes the conditions change it up. Grant doesn't like a sway bar, but everyone else I talk to likes a sway bar. So we're gonna try it with the sway bar. And then we're gonna try, if we don't like it, we'll disconnect it and see how it feels. We're gonna find out. So we got the sway bar and at the track, we could just unbolt it and see if we like it with or without. So we're gonna go with the sway bar. We have these adjustable end links. There's a lot of pieces to this. <laughs> Fumble and washers over here. Probably right in the middle for now. Just like that. Don't you just love that when everything actually fits together the way it's supposed to? How rare is that, huh? Oh, what a <laughs> That's some thick ass grease. <laughs> All those grease fittings you haven't greased in three years. Here's your sign. It helps. It helps. So, I took a little bit, I took a little bit of camber out, so now it has about six and a half degrees in it. I don't really know what the caster is right now, but I'm not gonna be drifting on this wheel, don't worry, but it is the, about the same size I'll be drifting on, which is a 17 by eight, which is suggested by Chelsea Denelfa, because he says anything bigger, you won't really get the full angle out of the kit. This is a 215.40, and we're gonna be switching to a 235.40. <laughs> so my biggest issue is how much we're actually gonna have to cut out right here. See how it's already super close? So a lot of guys have to cut out like, two inches of like their whole front section here. And we have to know that before one, we paint it, and two, um, obviously pick the correct offset for wheels. Boys ready? Mm-hmm. Are we already rubbing? A little bit. A little bit. Holy, no way. Now come back the other way. All right. You know, it, we'll lose a little bit of angle when it's loaded up, you know? Yeah. It just goes, and then there's that extra bit, and that just like, you see, this? Holy you see shit. this right here? That's it. We we need this on doors. That's it. Mm -hmm. B, mm -hmm. what do you think? That's, shit, that's what my shit looks like. <laughs> same same exact kit. So if you guys didn't notice, uh, obviously uh, we're big FDF fans around here, uh, but the SLR stuff is so tried and true for the BMWs. Uh, I have it on my E30. Brian has it on E46. Grant has it on his E36. I'm jealous of your new sway bar. Big juicy sway you're, bar. Yeah, like right now you're rubbing the control on it. So I, my, my car will go to like here probably. Yeah. But. So you need a stopper? So yeah, so we have rack stoppers to put in there. But if we're all on SLR, the cars will behave very similar, which will be really nice to tandem with. And it's nice because I'm so used to my E30. When I jump into this, it's not gonna feel so foreign. So it's gonna be a really nice transition over, so. The SLRs, I mean, they. I think this is their third iteration of the kit, or yeah. maybe even more. They, they have, have like yeah. 10 plus years of development. For the BMW, um, you can't beat it, so. Oh, that's not too bad. So we're gonna have to kind of, you know. Cycle it in. Bulldog stance it, but. We don't have to go too, too high with this setup, which is really nice. I think you gotta go a lot higher than this. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> two turns on that coil. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Two turns on the coil, we're done. Right, what, what, do you, I don't, I don't what are you what, doing there? What are you doing there? Put a piece of 80 grit on the tire. <laughs> <laughs> so I completely lied to you guys, I'm sorry. These are actually 17 by eight and a half plus 11. I don't know why I thought they were eights. Whatever. So uh, if I get eights, 
with a little bit higher offset, it'll fit better. So that's pretty good. Um, not mad about it, but I think we're gonna cut this arch out because a lot of guys with this kit end up doing so just so we don't have any clearance issues in the future. And we'll go from there. So SLR, cross off the list. So next thing on the list is the shifter and the e-brake setup because we need all that mounted so we can figure out where we want the bucket seat. And uh, then if the bucket seat's in spot, then we can figure out where the door bars go. And it's just a, it's a whole cycle. So before, I had this thing. It is a Joe. AKG and I don't know, I, was, I heard it wasn't that bad. I got it when I bought the other chassis. Uh, it just, it felt super cheap, honestly. I, I didn't like it. It, it. it could be my, you know, old dirty detents in my transmission, but uh, this just wasn't it. So I was suggested heavily this shifter. This is sick. IRP shifter. Mm. Got this, I was suggested this from a lot of people and uh, Got it at Drift HQ. Got everything at Drift HQ. Everything from this car I got at Drift HQ. I forgot to plug them earlier. Even though the compound right now is is flooded, uh, they're still pushing orders out. Yeah. So show them some love, order some parts. Order something from Drift HQ, man. Those guys are working hard. All right, so it actually comes with a nice lower piece that gives you almost like a lower boot to separate, I guess, all the noise and dirt coming out of the trans tunnel, which is nice. And this should work with a stock center console. You just obviously can't use your shift boot anymore. And you gotta drill a couple holes. So if you don't wanna drill holes, I get it, you know? The same for you. I like drilling holes and cutting the shit. Fabricating things. He just likes making me nervous. Right. <laughs> it's a two man job. That's it? We already have this billet selector rod from before, so. See that? Yep. Spoon thought I bent this. He goes, why are you shifting so hard? <laughs> oh, it's supposed to be curved like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little curve never hurt. Come on, man. <laughs> it's too easy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, Spoon, try her out. Maybe uh, it is. I put it upside down. Come on, there. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. That's just the F, dude. Yeah? That's just how they are. Alright, well. Jim, I'm a little more familiar with this uh, trans. It looks cool. That yeah. looks sick. That does look good. Alright? So, it's a lot, it's a lot tighter. Okay, yeah. well, the, the shift boot thing kind of fell apart, but it's a lot, like, tighter. Yeah. You know, that feels good. That feels normal to you? It feels normal. It's, it's nice because there's not, there's not slop in it. It feels, I mean, ZF's, Anyone who has a ZF transmission just knows this is just like, <laughs> you know. So the notchiness is normal. Notchiness is definitely normal. If you if you got a ZF, you know. But as far as ZF shifters go, that's good money. Yeah, dry shifting. <laughs> yeah, that's mint. I like that. So before we were using the Bride, uh, I think it's a Vios. I hear people from Europe call them Brids. Brids. Okay, yeah. the Brids. So. Yeah. Uh, I had the brides before just because they were available when I needed bucket seats or whatever when I wanted them. They're, they're cool seats, they're hot seats. Yeah. Right? Um, but they're just too damn big for them, to be honest. Yeah. Like These are meant for smaller people. And these are XLs. Smaller, maybe like Japan, larger Japanese men. Larger Japanese men. Donald's. Spoon Donnie's. Not, watch, Spoon, sit in this thing. It'll be mid. Perfect. Yeah, it's, perfect. it's perfect, see? Perfect. perfect for Spoon. Vikings. Uh, not so much for the Vikings like me and Steve. Yeah. Um, but they worked. So uh, this car, I want to not think about it. I just want to fit snug, tight, and in the right position. So I've actually had these Sparkos sitting around, which were for the 8.6, but these fit me a lot better. My, my hips actually fit in this damn thing. And there's a halo built in, which is nice because one of our local tracks that I never get to drive. They require They halos. require a halo, mm. which is a big deal. So if I put this in, I'll be good. Look at Loop, just take that bottle. He's out. So this is Matt, kill two birds with one stun. Right? Yep. I can actually fit in it. Harness height is good right here because usually the harness height is too low for me. Yep. And we get a halo. And the sparkles look pretty cool. So uh, we're going to swap over the rails, get it in the car, and uh, figure out where we can mount the e brake. That looks dope in there. Let's see. Ooh. Oh, oh this got is plenty. good. Yeah, you got I got plenty of headroom. So the weird thing about BMWs, at least in the E36, I've always seen this, mm -hmm. is the steering wheel is not like centered. If you center a bucket seat in the, where it comes factory, yeah. the steering wheel, look at this, it should be here. It's like over. To the left. We're gonna have to just make this rail look a little goofy and just probably put the whole seat over an inch. Look at my legs. 
It's bad. It's bad. It's and the seat. When you, when you sit in it, it's, it's a lot more noticeable. That's just a BMW thing? I don't know. I've noticed it with the with the E36s. I've noticed it. It's just funny. When you put a bucket in it. Yeah. That's like when you want to drive. You want to be as comfortable as possible in the car. Hell yeah. I don't want my steering wheel to feel like it's two inches to the left. Hmm. That's interesting. Luckily, there, there is a lot of room for adjustment. Even if we go all the way. Look how off center it is. So. This is why we test fit things. So we're gonna bring the seat all the way over. And then once we know where the seat is, we can figure out where we can cram this e-brake in a comfortable location. So like, oh, I love this shifter, dude. Like now that I'm sitting in here. Do the Jackie Chan, ready? The Jackie Chan Evo shift. <laughs> Just blow my synchros apart. But it's good, that's good. I love this. How many people are gonna talk shit in the comments about you dry shifting? Dry shifting, yeah. Don't be a hero. <laughs> Words by a spoon. Don't be a hero. Yeah, this seat's gotta go an inch and a half to the left that is crazy all right so we're trying to piece together whatever we can to make this work this is actually the original seat rail i made for this car like it's probably three and a half years ago when i first put the brides in it in like the old original shop how crazy is that it works mint though we're just trying to like find a combination of uh seat brackets that allow it to move over so the steering wheel can actually be in the center of me instead of a foot over yeah i think we have to go over more and down more, which means we have to completely recreate the, the sliders because before the like, seat was sitting yeah. in the sliders, now it's gonna sit above it, so. Yeah, you got nothing. Yeah, I got nothing. You got nothing. Yeah, man. all right, gotta start from scratch, but this is the time to do it. So, I got really lucky because I forgot I ordered these forever ago. So Garageistics makes these base plates that are kind of, mount your damn seat wherever you need to. Check these things out. Fire. Look how ridiculous these things are. Look at that. Literally mount your damn seat wherever you need to. <laughs> they give you, look, how long does this take the CNC? Too damn long. They're expensive, but for an application like this, it's kind of perfect. Make life so much easier. All right, so I put the camera down because it's been a lot of back and forth, but we did everything we could to get the seat over as far as possible. It's pretty crazy how far we had to move it over, right? Because if you look, the other side, we had to basically bridge off that rail Wait for it. Uh-huh. See how we had to make another pedestal right there? I had to bring the seat all the way over to the trans tunnel, and this is as far over as we can get it. I wouldn't mind having the seat over even like another half inch, uh, but it all works out. feels good for the pedals. I have plenty of room with the door card in my right arm. The only thing that's weird is the steering column is still a little to the left, even after moving the seat all the way to the left, which is pretty nuts. So what we're going to do to get that last little bit that we need is where the steering column actually mounts on the chassis or on the dash bar. So it actually attaches right here and right here. From factory, there's adjustment. You can see it slides back and forth. We're gonna basically open up this edge right here so we can bring it over just another quarter inch. We can get the steering column over a quarter inch. That's all we need. Yeah. We should be able to get that last little bit we need to get the steering column in the center of my seat. So we're just gonna take this. There we go. Oval eyes. I love how small this dash bar is though, it's pretty cool. So it's gonna go right there. So like if we had to remake this, it'd be super easy, especially um, since we are putting in cage and if we had to just put a whole new dash bar in, it's not a big deal. So we had quite a bit of movement from factory, but check it out now. That's wild. <laughs> it is wild. It's pretty cool that it comes factory oval eyes, you know? It's, it's a 90s car, they knew, they're like, there's gonna re room for discrepancies here, so. All right, check this out, ready? Look at, look at it. Perfect, that's mint right there. There you go, love that, that is awesome. Funny, cause like after moving the seat all the way to the left and the wheel all the way to the right, it's still, the steering wheel is still a little to the left. It's mad, but it's comfy, I'm happy, this is sick, like, I fit. It's gonna be tight when the door bars are in and I gotta crawl out from here in the door bar, but. It'll be good. The last thing is the e-brake, but we have just enough room for the e-brake in. That's it, so, I mean, everything feels great. This is sick, like, I have so much headroom now, and I'm not used to that. Even when the bar gets in here for the cage, like, meh, I am not used to sitting like this low in a car. It, it's good, it, it's sick when you can really tailor a car to fit you. I mean, I know a lot of guys out there have this issue, a lot of guys don't, but not being able to fit 100% in a car that you like to drive is, it's a pretty shit feeling. So be, be able to make it fit around me is awesome. So, all right, quick test fit of the dash. Oh, that looks so good. And it doesn't even look weird because we uh, moved it over quite a bit. Still fits in the normal location with the uh, well, quick test fit of the dash. Everything looks awesome. We moved it over quite a bit and it still actually fits in here even with all the plastic on. So 
doesn't look weird. It looks. <sighs> That's so cool. That's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be that. Nice car, but it still looks good. Yeah, this it looks so good with the dash in it. So, all right, huge progress today. Super happy. Of course, you gotta test fit everything a million times. The seat has been out in and out 40 times today. But uh, now that all of this is dialed in, we gotta weld up the mount for the e-brake. Super easy. And then it's uh, cage paint turbo and all that nonsense so uh you guys have heard me ramble on long enough but all i have to say is huge shout out to drift hq show them some love check out the website drifthq.com and with that we're gonna end it for now you guys know the deal like comment subscribe stay tuned for more content and we'll see you guys very shortly